Sometimes in the time you spend moping, pouting, and beating yourself up about messing up, you could have already bounced back twice. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. Life is filled with beautiful moments, filled with wins, accomplishments, love, beauty, and laughter. And while there are usually many more ups than downs, the downs do also exist and can feel downright debilitating. Today, we are talking about one of the downs in life known as a setback. The hiccups, delays, and mess ups that deter you from being who you want to be and achieving what you want to achieve. I want to share five easy tips with you to keep your setbacks from becoming permanent problems and to help you spend less time moping and more time moving forward because this is not the end. You can bounce back. You've got this. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is forgive yourself and release. I believe that we should do everything in our power not to fail or fall. But after you do, there's no use crying over spilled milk. We have grace for everyone else. Have a little grace for yourself. Maybe your temper got the best of you and you behaved out of character or like a character that you're trying to change from. Maybe you cheated on your diet badly. Maybe you slipped up with your ex. Whatever it is, we have to develop that thing within us that can say, I really wish that hadn't happened, but it did. What do I do now? Where do I go from here? Girl, what's the plan? We have to realize that this setback is only one chapter, heck, maybe one sentence in our entire book. Sometimes in the time you spend moping, pouting, and beating yourself up about messing up, you could have already bounced back twice or even thrice over, or at least you could have come up with a plan on how to. It happened. Learn from it, forgive yourself, release it, and move forward. And there are times where you have to realize there isn't even anything to forgive yourself for. It's completely possible that you weren't passed up for that job because you're an unqualified candidate or because you were unprepared. They were just always going to hire the boss's niece or nephew. So while it is a setback in the sense that you really wanted that job, all there is to do in a situation like that is release it and move forward. And as we talk here about not wallowing, I want to highlight that we are talking about setbacks today, not loss. I absolutely believe in taking the time and grieving losses, whether it's the loss of a loved one, the end of a relationship, or even a failed business. A loss marks the true and permanent end of something. Whereas with a setback, you are still able to get to your goal or some version of it. You're just dealing with a delay of some sort. So keep that difference in mind. Tip number two is to take advantage of the compound effect. After feeling like you failed or lost a round, nothing is going to jumpstart you faster than picking up a couple of wins. Life is just interconnected that way. Though bad days are absolutely salvageable, I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of times, once one thing is off, it just seems like everything else is off. Well, by getting one thing right or getting one thing back on track, you can shift the trajectory of everything else in a positive way as well. So as you're coming back from whatever your personal setback was, take a look at the other parts of your life, especially your habits. By taking control of things that may seem small, you're reminding yourself that you're in control, that you're capable of getting things done and making things happen. You're compounding the little wins. And these so-called little things also tend to make a big impact on how you feel and how ready you are to deal with life's challenges. So are you sleeping well? Are you eating well? Are you journaling? Are you planning out your days and planning your outfits? Are you enforcing your boundaries? Are you taking breaks when you need them? 
these things may not sound big on their own, but will being stressed, exhausted, and dealing with pent up emotions while you're sluggish, bloated, and not looking or feeling your best help or hurt the other situations in your life? And as we talk about getting back on track and making good choices for a compound effect, I just have to thank the good folks over at Ritual for working with me again and sponsoring this portion of the video. And shout out to all of you ladies who gave them a try the last time they were featured on the channel. Ritual makes high quality vitamins like their Essential for Women 18 plus multivitamin that will help to fill some of the most common dietary gaps and will suit most lifestyles as they are vegan friendly, non-GMO verified, and gluten free. The ingredients they use are also able to be traced directly back to the source. And these vitamins can be taken at any time of day with or without food. I don't know about you, but when I work out, I'm much more likely to eat well so I don't ruin the progress I just made. And when I eat well, I'm much more likely to take my vitamins as an extra bit of security to make sure I'm getting all the nutrients I need to keep me sharp and fuel me for the day. Like I said, it's all connected. One good decision tends to lead to others. So if you're in the market for a great multivitamin and you want to start a daily ritual that you can feel good about, use my code FUNIVERSE20 for 20% off your first month. And if you don't love them, they'll give you your money back. Tip number three is to refocus. Now that you've got yourself on a good trajectory and are in a good space, you're ready for the three R's, which are refocus, reassess, and replan. So let's start with refocusing. More likely than not, your goal got pushed to the back of your mind during or just before your setback. So you have to bring it back to the front. If the goal is to get fit, but you fell off, set aside a time each morning to watch fitness transformations or get healthy cooking, healthy food inspo. If instead of shopping, you should be saving money for a home, for schooling, or simply to be in a better place financially, read a little bit of a financial growth book every day, or check in with your favorite financial content creators. Overall, you need to focus more on your future goal than on your present distractions. And the best way to do that is to bring your future goal into your present by focusing on it daily or at least very regularly. Tip number four is to reassess. After you've refocused and your goal is at the front of your mind again, it's time to reassess. Was it simply a lack of focus that caused your setback or have your priorities shifted? Do you still even want this? You also have to assess if there are deeper issues that need to be addressed. Self-worth issues, time management issues, procrastination issues, fear of failure issues, anything that's causing you to suffer setbacks regularly instead of once in a blue moon. When doing your reassessment, you have to determine if your goal is still important to you and if there's an underlying issue keeping you from getting there. All the steps prior to this are important because they put you in a positive headspace to do this reassessment accurately and to make your decision from a place of confidence and clarity, not out of fear or other cloudy emotions. If you change your mind or move things around at this point, it's not because you're copping out. It's because you have a clear idea of what you still want or what you want instead. And lastly, tip number five is to replan. After you've refocused and reassessed, it's time to replan. Maybe changes and adjustments need to be made to your current plan. Maybe you need a new plan altogether. You might have a new destination or your destination may still be the same, but you need a new path to get there. You have to ask yourself at this point, what can I do instead or what can I do better next time? If you've decided you don't want to go to college, 
What are you going to pursue instead? What trade or skill can you learn to not only survive, but thrive? If you keep getting passed up for that promotion, do you need to really consider getting more experience or taking on more responsibility? Or do you need to consider a company switch because there isn't actually room for growth where you are? Is this fitness routine too vigorous to be sustainable with your current lifestyle? Maybe instead of fasting 20 hours a day, fasting 16 hours a day and eating for 8 hours a day would be much more realistic to stick to. Maybe you're not strong enough to resist your smooth talking ex situationship yet, even though you know he's no good for you. There's no shame in acknowledging that, but maybe going to places where you'll see him or to functions of mutual friends might need to stop for a while as you take the time to really focus on what you want and deserve from a relationship. That means no calls or texts either. The places you slip or suffer setbacks could very well be showing you exactly where the potholes in your plan are. Fill the potholes, whatever they may be, so that you can travel smoothly on your road to growth, goals, and success. In life, we will all deal with setbacks of different scales and sizes for sure, but setbacks nonetheless. The important thing is knowing that you have the capacity to come back, that you have the capacity to bounce back. As they say, it's not about how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up. So no matter what your setback is or may be in the future, may you find the power to rise. May you forgive yourself and release. May you use the compound effect to rebuild yourself and reclaim your power. May you refocus, reassess, and replan successfully. May your comeback be so much bigger than your setback. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.